Rusty Quill presents Chapter and Multiverse someone to talk to about the developments in our superhero story. And you are the best listener of my regular customers. First off, our superheroes, of course, have now had their identities revealed by UTBC in retaliation against Joseph's video. But they must put such personal matters aside as they go to question Poltergeist, who is being held in a containment cell. A touch. Hello and welcome to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle. My pronouns are she, her. And today we are playing our campaign of Masks, A New Generation, which is designed by Brendan Conway and allows players to take on the role of young superheroes. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players. Could you please let me know your name and pronouns and your character's name and pronouns, starting with Ahmed. Hi, I'm Ahmed Al Jabri, and as always, I'm stoked to be here. I'm playing Adib bin Yislam, aka the Turban, who apparently now everybody knows, or maybe some people know. Anyway, Adib's pronouns are he and him. Nice, and Lori. Hello, I am Lori Ann Davis, and I am playing Blue Day with Morgan, aka Siphon, both she, her, and Lydia. Hi, I'm Lydia. My pronouns are they, she, and I'm playing Minnie Smithson, whose pronouns are she, her, and I totally didn't forget my own name halfway through that. <laughs> and Pip. Hello there, I'm Pip Gladwin. I will be playing Joseph Teller, a former protege to the superhero Aquila. And uh, we're both he, him. Fantastic. So last we left off, uh, Zenith had outed himself as a superhero mm. and brought UTBC shady dealings to light with a whole bunch of evidence. And after UTBC retaliated in response, blaming you all for the mess that you'd made at UTBC headquarters, some of which was fair, Joseph went back to the night jar, the bar where Amal's gig had happened, to tell the rest of the team what had occurred. So you decided to return to Tarj as a group and are about to question Adib's frenemy poltergeist about his connection to the whole UTBC plot. So you are all perched in this glass box suspended in space in this warehouse containment facility. Vera is smoking and looking exhausted outside of the box and Poltergeist is avoiding your gaze. So what would you like to do? I believe the, the last thing that Minnie did was express disbelief at the fact that completely untrained, <laughs> inexperienced young people that have never done anything like this before are about to interrogate an apparently quite vulnerable and volatile person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> and Vera was like, can't hear you, don't know what you're saying, sorry. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Minnie makes a note about humans. <laughs> Morgan is feeling quite businesslike, uh, so we'll turn to Adib and be like, Adib, is there anything you want to ask? I, I walk closer to him and just, how are they treating you? Well, uh, it's not particularly comfortable in here, but um, I, I get why there isn't any furniture or anything. Uh, the food is like, actually quite good. Oh yeah, we established that. <laughs> I sit down next to him. I'll uh, I'll go pick up your brother and I'll talk to my family. We can he can stay with us for a while. Do you have anyone you need us to talk to or tell them or anything? You you do that after after everything? And of course. Um, there's there's no one else. It's just me and him. Yeah, I I we should probably go and pick him up after this. He's probably gonna get worried. Yeah, I really messed up. I messed up too. I'm sorry about what happened. Like, I, 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 I really lost it. <sighs> well, I, I lost it like a few months before that. So it just took you a while to catch up. That's all. 
Like, who would have thought like we would end up with superpowers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like started off playing video games and then mm -hmm. suddenly we were the video game. <laughs> yeah. But I guess uh, you're involved in all this nonsense now. I'm I'm kind of done for. I guess the l least I can do is tell you what I know. You know, there are always second chances. I know it's gonna be harder than before you make a mistake, but life is just gonna keep going, and if you're gonna just give up on yourself, nothing is gonna ever change. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, for the record, um, that that hospital thing that I was gonna do. I I persuaded UTBC to let me do that so that I could kind of stick one to the medical care industry type of thing and get some meds for Felix. And I was like, oh yeah, we'll we'll steal meds and sell them on the black market and it'll be a big scandal and it will generate a lot of news and all that stuff. But it was really, I was doing it for Felix. What did they actually want in the beginning? Like, what was the point of this? It was uh, all about generating news and clicks and talk and notoriety and stuff. Like, Targe has been doing an amazing job for years and there's just like nothing happening anymore. So it's just tabloid? Just click base and that's it? Yeah. Well, there's this... I, I, I've never met him, but apparently, like, the CEO of UTBC, Julian Kenilworth, I think, it's, like, all his idea. Minnie leans in. I don't understand people's motivations all the time, but even I think that sounds very unlikely. Are you sure that isn't a cover story? Wait, why now? Like, why is this timing? Why is it happening now? Is there something else related to this and this is affecting it? Like, why do they want to push news about these things? And I look at everyone. Is there anything happening in the news nowadays that could, I don't know, affect this? I mean, there is something else that has been... Uh, I've been talking to um, this other villain called Wilt. She was saying that she was going to, like, blow everyone else out the water and change everything. And, and it's something to do with, like, space and, and time. She was really, like, excited about it, and I think... And he kind of does some quick maths in his head. And he's like, I think, like, she was planning to, like, do whatever she was planning to do tomorrow. Do you know where she is? Oh, yeah, um, she said that she has this lair in uh, the industrial district because she got, like, this massive inheritance or whatever, and UTBC has also been funding her. I still don't understand why, uh news company trying to push for bad news about superpowers. I don't think it was to tarnish anyone's reputation. I think it was just what is the most exciting, the most controversial, the thing that's going to get people talking the most and generate the most money. I think it's just about money. Yeah, that makes sense. Can I make a Ben reading the files roll on Wilt to see if I know anything about this particular villain? Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, ma -ma -ma. Seven, eight, so uh, hit, but not a massive hit. Okay. I got one important detail that I've learned from my studies about this person, and then GM will tell me what, if anything, seems different from what I remember. So, Wilt. What do I know about Wilt? I believe that the most salient point that you would know about Wilt is that her powers involve kind of withering people's bodies so when she touches an arm it will kind of shrivel okay that sounds sort of similar to okay okay <laughs> what's changed what's is there something different she has been very under the radar for a long time it's unusual for her to be kind of boasting and saying that she's going to change everything it seems like this is an unusual happening for Wilt. Okay, thank you very much. I guess we should go check out this Wilt person. Wait, do you know about any other attacks or hostages or bad things that are planned in the next... Well, do you have like a shared calendar so that you don't clash or just to organize it that maybe we could get so that some of 
us and some of the other groups could maybe stop hostages getting taken and do you maybe have a whatsapp group called yeah. like villainous human friends or something yeah. like that like <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty low level in in the organization. I I'm not really privy to a lot of stuff. Um, I think Wilt was just very proud of whatever she was doing. Wait, what is the name of this organization? Villains for Hire. Well, it's just kind of there's no official name. It's either like Clear Vision Trading or like Technical Services. Ah, oh. ah, oh, shame. Oh goodness! And I wanted to intern for them. <sighs> but yeah, I do know that tomorrow there's going to be an attack by the hyena pack on the mayor uh, the town hall is going to be under siege Minnie writes that down and slaps it on the <laughs> glass for Vera to read like attack plans hopefully she'll pay some attention yeah she turns around at the sudden noise and she just gives the most long sigh you can't hear it but you can just see that her she's exhaling so hard and then instantly like turns on a communicator makes several calls takes several notes and starts getting things organized okay thank you that's sorted if we're um uh heading out to try and stop this wilt person i'm gonna need to get some gear i don't have my uniform oh well that's not a problem i just tap his shoulder and I shift the clothes that he's wearing into his usual uniform and with spots for, for whatever gear he usually has and puts in. Just kind of look down at myself in this sort of gray and gray and black approximation of the costume that I used to wear. I can't do helmets, though. It's just, it's not cloth. No, it's, that's okay. guess they know my face now, so <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> well, you can have mine. I, and I hand over my Dominus masks, which has I haven't been using properly apparently. <laughs> I'll take I'll take it in, in in both hands and thanks, Adib. Yeah. you're um uh, you're a good friend. We're all friends. And I I put on the Domino mask, finally completing my transition into just Robin. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Uh, But kind of without the actual acrobatic skills. Hey, now, I get an event. (laughs) I'll get an event. I'll get an event right now. Maddie, I get an event. (laughs) (laughs) Clang, clang, clang. Um, So do you exit the the cell with poltergeist? um, Or do you stay a bit longer? Do you have any further questions for him? I tell him, listen. They're going to give you a lawyer. If they're not good, just let me know. And don't talk to anyone without a lawyer. I mean, I you should tell them as much as you can, but make sure a lawyer is there. <laughs> okay, cool. Like, we watched all the movies together, so we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, like... Um, I have the right to remain silent, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. You probably shouldn't have really talked to us. I mean, they're recording all of this... And true. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um so sorry about that. Yeah, so keep quiet until a lawyer is present. Except for us. <laughs> okay. I'm confused but <laughs> grateful. Thanks guys. I tap on, on his knees and get up. Cool. Are you making your way out of the cell? Yes. Nice. Uh one last thing. I uh, before I step out, I turn around and tell him, you know, Lynn is gonna lose their mind. Oh man. Uh I, I do not want to be in the room when that happens. Yeah, you're going to be far away. <laughs> I'm probably going to take the blunt of it. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I continue walking out. Now. Minnie asks what I am wondering, which is like, who, who's Lynn? Uh, Lynn, we're, we're like a trio. Me, Lynn, and Lucas. Oh. Lynn doesn't know about our powers. They know that uh, Lucas is going rogue and doing crazy stuff. But they didn't know about me. Hmm. Maybe Lynn has powers. <laughs> and you didn't know. <laughs> that would be a fun conversation. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, most of the people we've met recently have had them. So. And I mean, you didn't even spot that I was an alien. And apparently that was very obvious to quite a few people. Well, Looks at Zenith. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty obvious, many. <laughs> mm, you know. Maybe everyone's a superhero and they're all hiding it from each other. And if everyone was just 
honest with one another and straightforward and said what they mean, then everything would be fine. <laughs> That's a very good point. I look ashamed. <laughs> Morgan has lost all the colour in her face and says, on that note, I think maybe we need to talk. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to do it here, viewed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's um let's get out. I'm gonna grab a couple of things. Um, you know, and I sort of gesture to my like suit that has sort of, you know, a couple of little hooks and pouches for like gear that are empty. They have their whole armory, so I'm gonna get some stuff and I'll I'll, I'll meet you guys outside. Oh, let me come and weave some uh, Kevlar on with your clothes. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's. Uh, and uh, I'll 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 go real quick, real quick scene. Go to the armory. And Adib sweating as he's trying to focus <laughs> on the Kevlar. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do a full like original TV series Wonder Woman thing where I'm gonna stick my hands out in a T pose and spin around in a circle <laughs> while Adib is like, <laughs> like. <laughs> That's what happens. No one else is watching. We have a great time. We tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> and I will grab Taj's sort of lower budget approximations of the gear that I had before. So the sort of standard like smoke bomb stuff. I imagine you're like, this isn't even scented. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, little little sort of touchpad computer thing for my little wrist computer. Um, I say don't take a helmet because I've got my domino mask now. And I think the last thing that I'll do, it, they have a wide selection of weapons here, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I'll grab a, like, like off-brand, like, Western-made Kasari Gama. Uh, <laughs> just be like, the hook on this is too long. This is stupid. Uh, uh, wrap it around myself, like, uh, tie the chain off. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is I go to exactly where I know that the bug I placed in this room is. <gasps> I will pull it off the bottom of the uh, shelf. I bring it close to my mouth and I say, you and I need to talk. And then I crush it between two fingers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And I'll meet, uh, we'll head back out and meet the guys outside. Nice. Um, meanwhile, I would like to suggest that Morgan and Minnie spot that the coffee shop where you first met uh, Tip Top Coffee Shop is not normally open at this late hour it is getting into the early hours of the morning but you see that the light is on and the door is open And We are uh, absolutely not going in there because that is where Taj holds all their meetings and so they will absolutely have bugged it just as much as they have the inside of their own building Yeah that's a really good point, should we go to the uh, the bus? That is extremely obvious <laughs> There's the 24-hour <laughs> dessert shop around the corner. I think we should go there. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a there's a man in a waistcoat just kind of peering out the window, looking very disappointed as you walk away. <laughs> <laughs> so you manage to find a kind of greasy spoon 24-hour chip shop type place that serves coffee in polystyrene cups, uh, like that cafe that they send the losers on The Apprentice to. And you enter, and soon after, uh, Adib and Joseph join you. I order my usual chocolate, <laughs> hot chocolate with whipped cream and everything. And then when I get it, I get disappointed because it's not as good <laughs> as the other one. Yeah, it's a it's a hot water mixture, hot chocolate, and the the cream is very much like one of the poorer from a can variety. Let's not come back here again. Minnie, on the other hand, is absolutely fascinated by the difference in taste of the coffee from a polystyrene cup. <laughs> it's like, this is incredible. Is this what they're talking about when they say that wine should be served in those carafes? Mmm. <laughs> like it's enjoying the aroma of the instant coffee from the polystyrene cup. There's so many different interesting chemicals leaching into it. Can, can I just ask for my uh, visualization of this scene? Are we all in costume or is it just me? Uh, Minnie always looks like <laughs> she's in costume. I know Minnie's costume mm. is kind of like, which it's just which outfit yeah. am I wearing rather than like superhero persona, human persona. It's just both. So, oh, but we went straight from Poltergeist to drop in Poltergeist off to the grey box, which was empty, to the gig. So actually, yes, yep. I guess I am in... My costume. But your costume just <laughs> looks like your super cool bodybuilder, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have yeah. my mask on, I mean, but yeah. He doesn't have a mask on. Well, I guess uh, Adiv is also in his 
<laughs> black suit and uh, all Great. his stuff. I feel less awkward. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, as you are all in variously in your costume slash eccentric but very uh, well put together dress wear, I'm going to take a short break and be right back. Hi everyone, this is Kareem Cronfley, the Eternal Tavern Keeper from Chapter and Multiverse. Just taking a break from the action for a moment, I'd like to give you some more detail about a new Forged in the Dark role-playing game called Wicked Ones and its expansion, Undead Awakening. Wicked Ones and its expansion thrust you into the roles of either a group of fantasy monsters building their own dungeon with an aim to raid the dwellers of the surface, or the role of a powerful rotting undead, raising a horde to terrorise the living. Wicked Ones had a great launch on Kickstarter in 2019, and since then the team at Bandit Camp have fully developed the new expansion, Undead Awakening, along with the brilliant and artwork needed to have these printed as a deluxe hardback set. You can either support them by looking to get the original digital version, or even better, back their new Kickstarter to fund the new hardback print run, along with a bunch of other Kickstarter-specific goodies. To find out more about Wicked Ones, or for links to the new Kickstarter hardback run, head over to www.banditcamp.io. That's www.banditcamp.io. I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. And welcome back. So you are all sitting in this rather dingy all-night cafe about to go into some details what would you like to discuss morgan is looking pretty shaken and pale and just not okay okay um so i i suppose i've had a a, a secret though it wasn't really relevant but um i kind of know wilt well i don't actually know her she's uh, she used to work for my parents. Um, my parents were villains. Um, well, uh, I don't know very much. That's why I live with Owain. He, he's my mum's brother. Um, she, they, I don't really know what they were planning, what they were doing, but my mum could, um, open portals so you could travel through to anywhere in the universe I I think I was quite young when they died Uh, my dad could travel through time so together they were quite powerful I'm told Um, and Wilt Wilt was their protege I think I don't really, Owain wouldn't tell me much what their plan was or why it was more important than being there for me and Aquila was the one that stopped them. Wilt is Wilt is dangerous. Wilt is so powerful, so dangerous and as far as I know her powers are irreversible. Like she'll touch your arm and it will wither and that's it. Like I'm and she but she's not like found me but I think Owain was suspicious that she wanted me in some way or I don't know I don't know what to do I think I need to speak to Owain Minnie gives Morgan a hug or at least offers one mm. yeah Morgan will kind of fold on, on to you <laughs> Minnie is so small <laughs> like a, and like a big she, tree. she tries so hard to give the biggest squish. <laughs> Do you like increase your density? So. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> Thanks, Minnie. It's That's a very Morgan. reassuring crush. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't want you to get hurt because she's dangerous. But if, if I mean, this is probably big, right? Like, I know my parents' plan was was big and she worked with them and maybe she's doing what they were doing i don't know maybe we need aquila joseph can we maybe can we talk to aquila she 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 stopped my parents maybe she can stop wilt uh i doubt she would talk to me not after what happened wait wait there's this sounds very big and very important. Are, are we saying that Tahash wouldn't be putting lots of other more qualified superheroes on this issue? We we should tell them. Yeah. And and all the superheroes, including the ones that have been doing it for more than three days, <laughs> should perhaps be helping out. 
I, 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 sorry to jump in. I'd like to imagine uh, the TV in this place. Just uh, somebody ra- raises the volume, and we hear the news: a meteor falling <laughs> <laughs> to Earth, and all the <laughs> big superheroes. Yeah. Are... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I think it's a minor like... alien invasion happening in like, <laughs> yes. Nicaragua. They've got to go over there and deal with that. Like, you know. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, you do know that the mayor is going to be in danger. And I think definitely, if if not a meteor strike, there is definitely something on the news about uh, a prison break of villains from the local maximum security prison. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on right small, now. Small satellites been knocked out of orbit. Uh, <laughs> but, but we've literally had, I mean, the, the obvious answer is that UTBC has been deliberately starting both real and exaggerated chaos super, super crime yeah. super crime yeah. that just means that they've planned to have all super superheroes in other places mm. yeah but absolutely I, like i think minnie's reaction would definitely oh, be that makes sense we are yeah. young and small <laughs> or at least i am very small i mean legit yeah <laughs> I am only small. Do not, do not want. <laughs> Leave me alone. I don't know how to sell shoe. Maddie, Maddie, we didn't have this discussion. I don't think early on. Or maybe we should have done. As far as Joseph is concerned, and as far as the public information about Aquila as a superhero when Aquila was being a superhero, did they have a Batman style? I don't kill people thing. Have I been trained that way? So is the, uh, you know, it's been about an hour, give or take, since Morgan told me that Aquila killed her parents. Is the idea that Aquila killed anyone a shock to me? Or is it, you know, like, did they, did they kill? I think she was very Batman-esque in that she tried not to kill in most cases. She's probably hidden this particular part of her history from you. Yeah, I figured. But if you look into it it kind of correlates around the time that she became much more insular and much more isolated Uh, and got away from society and shut herself in her tower. Thank you. So I just wanted to get that. I mean, I could could go to the Apex building, but I... I think I need to know what actually happened. I'm going to go and speak to my uncle. I'll be back really soon. And Morgan's just going to (laughs) disappear. Because she can portal now. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone. What? And she's going Did that, home. Is that mini... What? Like, is, <laughs> she, she didn't mention that before, did she? I didn't miss something. <laughs> is that something you can all do? No. No. <laughs> okay. That's not a human thing, Minnie. Cool. That's, cool. That, cool. I, I didn't even know that was a Morgan thing. Okay. Uh, Morgan has just acquired another doom point. Cool. <laughs> to, to pay to teleport. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Joseph, I know you said that Aquila wouldn't talk to you, but if only there was some way that we could let Aquila know about some of the things we've been talking about and just then we'd know that she could hear us and she could decide whether to help bring down her old enemy or not. Uh... But I still have some um, listening devices in the Taj building. I didn't destroy all of them. It's been a big couple of days. We have been busy. That was part of the. That was part of the mission. She was suspicious of Taj. Apparently, there were some less than savory dealings back in the day, but nothing. Uh, Nothing provable, nothing, apparently, as far as I can tell, nothing grounded either. She was just, I don't know, paranoid. Maybe she always has been. Joseph, did you, did you bug us? Technically, the earpieces, yeah. My helmet recorded everything. Okay. I'm sorry. I... I... (sighs) Is there anything else that you haven't told us? It seems like there's a lot. (laughs) I think that's most of it. Uh, I've been re- recording everything since we met. My job wasn't to watch you guys. My my job wasn't to... You just did that for fun? <laughs> I did that because that's what I was told to do. Everything I everything is... Rec- my whole life has been recorded, Minnie. I think this is the first time in a, a very long time 
that I'm not actively being watched by Aquila. I, I burned everything. I think I got all of the trackers out of my gear. I don't know. But I just I just burned all of it. I don't think the track pants and the hoodie were bugged, but with her, it's really hard to tell. But that's my... I didn't... You guys didn't, you didn't sign up for any of that. I did. Do you want me to check? Yeah, actually. All right, so I, I touched his shoulder on the cloth and just focus for a minute. Is there anything that... Uh, that seems unusual amidst his clothes. To your relief, uh, you don't notice anything that is non-fabric integrated into Joseph's clothing. So he seems to be bug-free for now. No, seems fine. Okay, good. Uh. It's okay, Joseph. I, I, I get the feeling that it hasn't been clear to you what's obvious or right or she really messed with your sense of reality. Um, yeah. You didn't mean to hurt us. If it's any consolation, Minnie, I think, uh, well, I've. It's been kind of nice hanging out with you guys. Um, and look, I know I said some things about how it was really obvious that. You were an alien. Yeah, that was hurtful. And I'm not going to say it wasn't really obvious that you were an alien. Because, oh, okay. Minnie, it was. <laughs> but you taught me a lot about being a human. So. Minnie starts crying, jumps over, and gives a hug. And says, You can read all my articles about being a human if you want. I'll, I'll translate them back into a human readable format. <laughs> <laughs> There's all sorts of details about what's appropriate at what times and exceptions to those rules because whenever there's a rule there are so many exceptions and, <laughs> and all of that anything that will that, that you want and yeah Minnie gives a, a big Aww. again squishy hug I'll, I'll, I'll hug Minnie back and I, th I think there's like the, the, the I think the tension breaks a little bit for, for Joseph there slightly and I think he is also sort of almost kind of laughing not in a ha ha you're crying kind of way but in like a <laughs> there, there's a emotion yeah. is kind of yeah. coming up to the surface Aww. here it's one of those tension break laughs that happens through tears yeah, yeah. my first hug <gasps> oh my gosh! Apart from any others that may have happened in other episodes, my yeah. first reciprocated hug. Oh, there we go. oh, so sad! I teleported away. <laughs> Bye. And speaking of Morgan teleporting away, you appear uh, once again in Owain's kitchen. You know, all is quiet. All is dark. There are no lights on. It is in the middle of the night, so you suspect that Owain is probably in bed. Yeah, um, and Morgan will head to his room, knock. Is there... Does he say come in? Oh, no. He, yeah, you hear you hear a kind okay. of muffled... What, what is it? Um, I'll, I'll just be, Owain, Owain, it's me, I'm, I'm coming in. Oh, all right. Um, are you okay? And like, as you open the door, you can see him kind of sitting up in bed mm. kind of grabbing a, a dressing gown from beside the bed and put, pulling it on no no not really um okay i know you've not told me what really happened possibly for a reason but wilt is wilt is planning something big and i think i'm gonna have to face her and i just i can't i can't face her without knowing what 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 were my parents doing all right, I knew this would come at some point, and I probably should have done this sooner, but... So, Mab and Math, your parents, uh, you know that they could travel through space and time. Yes, I know. Mammy could manipulate space. They, Daddy could manipulate time. I know. What? Why? What were they doing? They, uh, they wanted to combine their powers to open a portal to another universe and let loose monsters into the city. But why? They thought that society was broken. They thought that the only thing that could fix it was to rip it up and start again. And with them at the top. Uh, that's... 
outrageous. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think the power that they had was so unique and so powerful, for want of a better word, and they brought out the worst in each other and they egged each other on to greater and greater heights. But what about... more about me? They were just going to start again. I think, um... They were a bit wrapped up with Wilt. They uh, mm. picked her up when she was quite young and mm. trained her up. <laughs> and I, I think that once their plan was carried out, they would have come back for you and they would have um, mm. raised you as a sort of, I don't know, an heir. But okay, they were so wrapped up in each other and themselves and their plans. They were... Morgan's going to, like, push down the emotion of the implication that they preferred Wilt to her. How can I stop Wilt? She can't do the things that they did, though, surely. Like, how could she... I don't know how she could mimic their powers uh, with her power set. It doesn't make sense, but she must have found something. Her whole obsession was continuing their work and finishing what they started. Now would be a really good time for a vision, Owain. I wish I could just turn these things on I and know, off, but... I know, I they... know. Oh, by the way, I had one. Oh, really? Are, are you all right? Yeah, it was a bit scary. I sapped my friend's energy, though. She was fine, she's awake now, but... Also, I can, um... I'll just, like, teleport backwards a few metres. <laughs> oh! Wow. Uh, right. Uh, seems like your uh, your your um, family line is continuing. I I suppose. Is that how Mammy would move through space? Yeah, I think so. Um, so the prophet. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You and you have no idea how Aquila stopped them. I um. I know that she was a very powerful hero in her day and she didn't have any powers as such but she was very skilled in combat and she attempted to take them down non-lethally and it went wrong. That's what I've heard. Hmm. But no idea of the method? No, I think it's been kept pretty quiet. Okay. Um... I need to go. Um, I love you. And she'll give him a hug. I love you too. See you soon. And she'll just pop up back to the cafe where hopefully you where still are. Where we're all hugging! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> yeah, Minnie has definitely reached out an arm and, like, beckoned Adib over. Join the hug! Adib would be just busy on his phone. Oh. And this, during this time, he turned off his phone again. And ignoring all the missed calls and all the missed messages from everyone, just go straight to the chat with his sister and type down everything he can say to her. You've got like so many texts from people you know, <laughs> just so many WhatsApp notifications from people being like, hey, dude, is that you on the news? <laughs> I don't have time for this. It kind of looks like that's you on the news, dude. I like the idea that all the cosplay buddies are like, I knew, I knew this is why you always won the competitions. <laughs> <laughs> you cheated. I'm going to get that award taken away from you. Unfair advantage. <laughs> advantage, dude. <yeah. laughs> Ignoring how Adib ignoring all these frustrating messages, uh, he would go straight to the chat with his sister and explain everything to her. His parents are probably still awake. She might be awake with them. I don't know, but he's not gonna wait for an answer. He's just gonna uh, explain everything and tell her to go pick up Lucas's brother and just turn off the phone again after saying, "I will be back as soon as I can. I need to see this through." All right. Yes, that is done. <laughs> so the, there was a slightly awkward moment where, like, <laughs> like so <laughs> Minnie and Joseph are hugging, and then like Minnie kind of looks over and like beckons Adib, and Adib's like, <laughs> I ding, think, ding 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 ding, <laughs> and there's like nothing. <laughs> like, Adib, Adib, oh, okay, okay. And then Morgan fine. appears. <laughs> yes, as Adib turns his phone off again, Morgan appears and sees the, the hug that Adib's not in it, and is like, oh, and it kind of like 
pulls a deep in and just puts her arms around everyone. <laughs> yeah. So let's finish on that. Yeah. <laughs> let's finish on the pass. camera pans to the side as the bemused person who's actually running this little cafe of just kind of sat behind the counter <laughs> watching four superheroes <laughs> hug in a corner. Um, hey, we're not wearing masks. We might just be I, strangely dressed. I'm 100% people. wearing a domino mask. Oh, right. <laughs> like, yeah, and the, the camera does a Looney Tunes kind of circle in on their face. <laughs> And they go, it's a living. (laughs) (laughs) That's all, folks. A a serious show about serious stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Emotional. Backstory and funny camera gags. And on that note, yes, absolutely. We have to end the episode there for today, unfortunately. But we will be back very soon with a new episode for you. The second last episode of the campaign. (gasps) Penultimate. And so, as always, I must ask our fantastic players where we can find them on the internet, starting with Lowry. Oh, hello. You can find me, Lowry, at Lowry Tweets on Twitter and on other podcasts. Nice. And Pip? You can find me at Pip underscore Gladwin on Twitter and on this feed. Look out for upcoming uh, Rusty Quill shows. I'm going to be doing some stuff in uh, Cry Havoc, which you might have heard about. And uh, yeah, um, um, other things as well as that. I'm finished. Excellent. And Lydia? Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm on Twitter at Lyd Nicholas, my chickens on at Urban Chooks. And I am scattered across the RQ podcast universe in various guises. So, you know, hunt me out, but don't like stalk and devour me. That, hunt in a friendly way. Yeah, yeah don't hunt me for sport. Yeah. Don't hunt me for sport. <laughs> Just enjoy the voice acting that I've done. <laughs> and Ahmed. Hello. You can find me everywhere at Mr. Al Jabri, mostly on Twitter, where I share adapted bits for tabletop RPG characters and world building. And just look for the avatar with the turban. Excellent. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie underscore abstract, where there are links to all the various things that I do. And we hope to see you next time on Chapter and Multiverse. But until then, from all of us here in the space between worlds, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by M. Lindemann with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronkley. This episode was edited by Lori Ann Davis, Tessa Vroom and Maddie Searle with music by Nikova Teze. Thank you for listening.